Hello there friends and welcome. This is a guide with everything you need to know about how to fully complete Brunny the Witch's quest. From the start to the end of it, with all of the locations and NPCs you have to talk to in the correct order. Brunny's quest is unique in that it's probably the quest with most content in the entire game. And you even gain a lot of nice rewards from it, such as Adula's Moonblade and the Runny's Dark Moon spell. And of course, even the classic Moonlight Greatsword of the game. In this case, the Dark Moon Greatsword for that classic from Software Nostalgia. You even unlock an entire new ending for the game, the Age of Stars, all through Runny's quest. So let us get started. Now just before the first step, I think it's important to note that you don't have to necessarily have met Runny at night at the Church of Ele as your first encounter. And you can also do this without having met Blaith, the Half-Wolf, at the Mistwood Ruins. Anyways, here's how it goes. The first step is getting to Runny's Rise, the middle tower here, in the upper part of Caria Manor, which is well in the top leftmost corner of the Liurnia of the Lakes region. It is actually the only one of the three towers that will be open when you first arrive. So simply enter it and speak with Runny at the very Again, top of the tower. Now it is important to note that if you have already started the Radan festival, Runny will only appear here after you defeat the Star Scourge Radan boss, so keep that in mind. And don't be afraid of picking this option to serve her, because it will not lock you out of the other endings. Right after that, Runny will tell you to speak with her three helpers. Blaith, the Half-Wolf, Seluvis, the Sorcerer, and also Warmaster, E.G. They'll both appear in spectral form inside her tower after you first speak with her. So now you have to speak with these three NPCs before you can proceed. After speaking with all of them, return to Rani at the top and she'll tell you about how she's going to enter a deep slumber. We can now proceed to the next step, which is meeting Blaith, the Half-Wolf, at the Sea Offer River Well area south of the third church of America, Grace. So from the Sea Offer River Bank, the second Grace in the map, you'll want to follow my blue marker by heading east. Just keep going right ahead and you can already see Blaith way over there next to the cliff. Quite a big guy, so it's not hard to miss. Ah, good to see you. And he'll send you to talk with Seluvis. Back at the same place where we met with Ronis, except we have to go towards Seluvia's Rise, which will now be open. Well, well, you... So accept the task. Good, good. And Seluvius will send you to find an NPC called Nefeli and give her his potion. There are other NPCs you can give the potion to, but I think Nefeli is the easiest and the intended way. Also, you can skip this potion part with Seluvius, as far as Ronis' quest anyways, by just defeating the boss Radan at Kaelid and starting the festival at Redmain Castle. As far as Nefeli's whereabouts, well, after you defeat Godric the Grafted, the boss of Stormvale Castle, Nefeli will be at Roundtable Hold I'll after you again, speak with Gideon, her end. father, who is the guy that you can talk with right here. After you exhaust Nefeli's dialogue in Roundtable Hold, however, she will move to another area. You can find her again in the village of the Albino Ricks. From the village Grace, you can find Nefeli under the stone bridge here. So simply exhaust her dialogue here and defeat the area boss at the bridge on the opposite side of Nefeli and then she'll finally return to round table hold and speak with Nefeli who will be past the stairs after the blacksmith. She'll act depressed. So the next step is to talk with Gideon about Nefeli. Only then can you finally at last go back to Nefeli and feed her Seluvis potion. After that, it's just a matter of returning to Seluvis. Ah, Talk with so him again. Drink the potion. Ask about Nokron. Well, well. Receive Seluvis introduction. And now let's head back to where Selen is. Right here at the Waypoint Ruin Cellar. Show letter of introduction. Well, well. And Selen will pretty much tell you to go defeat General Radon at Kaelid. After speaking with Selen, Return to the Sea Offer River and speak with Blaith again. Ah. Tell Selen's hmm. story. And now it's time to go to Redmain Castle at Kaelid and defeat General Radon. This is why I said you can pretty much skip most of the parts before this by just going right ahead and defeating General Radon. But of course, you'll miss out on some dialogue. 
but the quest will proceed just fine. Now, after you defeat General Radan, a crater will appear right at this section of the Mistwood ruins. A little bit to the southeast of the Mistwood outskirts, Grace. You can go down the crater, and the path will lead you to Nokron, Eternal City. So now we have to find the Fingerslayer Blade for Rani, which will be in this chest right here. So right at this part of the map, pretty close to the Night Sacred Ground, Grace. After getting your Finger Slayer Blade, you can return to Rani at last. Ah, it was thee. Talk to her again. Trust thee with this. And you'll get a Carrion Inverted Statue from her. My thanks. A strange... Now that you have the Inverted Statue, use it on the Carrier Study Hall, and you'll get to access a secret area. And now once you open the door at the Inverted Carrier Study Hall, you'll finally be at the bridge leading to the Divine Tower of Lyurnia of the Lakes. Simply go straight ahead and use the lift to reach the top of the Divine Tower. And at the very top of the tower, on a corpse, you'll find the Curse Mark of Death. After getting your Death Mark, you'll have to go to Rena's Rise, a tower that is on the same area as Heluvi's Rise and also Rani's Rise. At the top, you'll find a Sending Gate, so use it to travel to another location, which will lead you to the Incel River Main. And at this coffin you'll find the miniature Rani, a doll resembling Rani the Witch. Now take the doll and head towards the grace there at a distance. And upon resting at it, talk to miniature Rani. Talk again. Oh. And again. A dogged fellow, aren't so after three times, we? she'll or answer back. Thy habit to talk to dolls? Fine. And she'll tell you to the eliminate the Baleful Shadow. The is already sullied by thee. And to fight the Baleful Shadows, well, basically just keep going right ahead. It is somewhat of a long path because you have to walk, but also very straightforward. As you go through the path, you'll soon notice the water going down. So just descend alongside it, and you'll soon reach Noxtella Eternal City. Once again, you mostly want to keep going straight ahead, you don't have to go up the stairs, until you reach the Noxtella Waterfall Basin Grace. You'll find the Baleful Shadow right there ahead in the distance. And now we get the discarded palace key. After getting the discarded palace key, go back to the Rhea Lucaria Grand Library, the same area where Renala is, and you can finally use your key to open the chest here. For the Dark Moon Ring, now with the Dark Moon Ring on hand, we have to go to yet another place. The Grand Cloister in the Lake of Rot area that you can access by descending a lift. The lift is past the same area where we just fought the Baleful Shadow. So you just have to go up the stairs here, skip going right ahead and down the lift. Which will lead you to the Lake of Rot and the Lake of Rot Shoreside Grace. Now you basically have once again to keep going straight ahead past almost the entire Lake of Rot until you reach the Grand Cloister area. Traveling the lake can be pretty annoying because of all the Scarlet Rot. Be sure to go with the Flame Cleanse Me spell to easily remove Scarlet Rot on demand. It only requires 12 faith. Even if your character has no faith at all, you can always use Godric's Great Rune for a plus 5. And also the Two Fingers Heirloom for another plus 5, so pretty easy to get. From the Grand Cloister Grace at the Lake of Rot, you have to go down all of the way and then ahead. To start descending the path, simply drop down here onto this other ledge. Then it's just a matter of going down. Drop again and keep going ahead. You don't have to face the prone enemies, what you want to do is turn left here. Then straight ahead until you reach the sarcophagus. If you have the Dark Moon Ring, you can choose the rest in the coffin option. As strange as that sounds. Your character will then use the sarcophagus to surf down the waterfall of blood. This will lead you to a new area, and if it's your first time, right ahead of me there will be a fog wall. And beyond it, you'll have to fight the boss Astel, natural born of the void. After defeating Astel, once again go straight ahead and climb up the path into the Altar of Moonlight. And here we are. Don't forget that if you want to get a very powerful spell, you can find the Glintstone Dragon Adula patrolling the area around the Moonlight Altar. After you defeat it, you'll gain one of the best spells in the game, Adula's Moonblade. A sorcery with amazing damage, extreme range, and very wide reach. 
After getting past Adula, we can finally enter the Cathedral of Manuselis. Once you enter the Cathedral and activate the Grace, you'll have to go down this little area here. First drop here, and then here. So now just keep going right ahead, and you'll soon reach this area with Rani's body. Choose the option to wear your ring. Just talk with so Rani afterwards. It was thee who would become my lord. And that was it, friends. You can finally get the Dark Moon Great Sword too. Now, just before I finish this guide, we might as well also talk about how to get the very powerful Rani's Dark Moon spell, as it can only be found in the same area as the Cathedral of Manuselis, so the Moonlight Altar, which you are at anyways. First, you have to go south until you reach the Chelona's Rise Tower. Now you have to do one of the same turtle puzzles that you might already be familiar with for the memory slot upgrades. Interact with the book close to Shalona's Rise and this will spawn three turtles where I have set my blue markers at. They are nearby in the area. You have to attack these three turtles and then the seal blocking the entrance to Shalona's Rise will fall and you can find your spell inside. Just as a note, you cannot fast travel while doing the turtle puzzle. Alright everyone, so this was it for my complete Runny's quest guide. I hope I've managed to properly explain everything to you. If not, please be sure to comment down below. Especially if you want me to make more Elden Ring quest guides. Please remember to support the channel if you can by liking, subscribing and even becoming a channel member. Thank you for watching and see you next time friends.